Write the complete ionic and net ionic equation. So we have 3 KOH. That means I have 3 K plus and 3 OH minus. I have 3 um, H plus on this phosphoric acid plus 1 PO4 3 minus. This is aqueous, so we break this apart. 3 K plus plus 1 phosphate. And H2O is a pure liquid, so we don't break apart pure solids, and we also don't break apart pure liquids. So H2O is a pure liquid. It does not get broken apart either. So here's the complete ionic equation. So to turn a complete ionic equation into a net ionic equation, I have to locate the spectator ions. A plus is the same on both sides. Phosphate is the same on both sides. So remember, a trick to locate the spectators is to locate the aqueous species on the product side that contains both of your spectators. K and PO4. So after we remove the spectators, we rewrite what's left. Put the positive ion first. 3H plus plus 3OH minus makes 3 H two O liquid. So now, to write a net ionic equation, we have to follow the rules of balancing equations. So although this was balanced before, I have a three to one to one to three ratio, and those numbers can't get any smaller. When I look at my net ionic equation, I have a three to three to three ratio, and those numbers can get smaller. So when I'm left with this situation in my net ionic equation, I have to reduce those numbers. So if I divide all of them by 3, then I have 1 H plus plus 1 OH minus makes 1 H2O liquid. So this would be the net ionic equation. In an acid-base reaction, the net ionic equation is always H plus plus OH minus makes H2O. This is always the net ionic equation in an acid-base reaction. Complete and balance the following reaction and then write the complete ionic and net ionic equation. So when we're um, trying to complete an equation, we need to um, determine if it's going to be a double displacement reaction or a single displacement reaction. In this case, I have this compound and this compound. And each of these compounds consists of two parts. And this is the positive part and the negative part, and this is the positive part, and this is the negative part. So just like in a previous example, this is a double displacement reaction. And in a double displacement reaction, the positive ions are going to trade places. So to complete this on the other side, that means that um, instead of the Ca being with OH, now H is going to be with OH. And instead of the H over here associating with acetate, C2H3O2, this is acetate. Find this on a, a table of polyatomic ions. So instead of H associating with acetate, calcium is going to associate with acetate. So we'll put Ca, c 2 h 3 All right, so now we need to write their charges so that we can figure out what these compounds look like. The charge on H is plus 1. The charge on OH is minus 1. The charge on calcium is 2 plus. We could find that on the periodic table. And the charge on acetate is minus 1, which we could find in a table of polyatomic ions. 
or I can recognize that if H is plus one and I have one acetate ion, then it must be minus one so that they can match. So H plus and OH minus, what does that make when it comes together? HOH, which is also called H2O, which is a liquid. And here, calcium, two plus, and Ca, uh, or uh, acetate, C2H3O2. So we're gonna do the switcheroo. The one is gonna come down here and become the subscript of calcium. And the two is gonna come down here and become the subscript of acetate. So I need to put parentheses and put a two over here. Let me move my calcium a little bit closer. So to figure out if this is going to be uh, dissolved, soluble, aque an aqueous solution, or a solid precipitate, I again should consult uh, the solubility chart. So if we look at our solubility chart here, this says which ions are soluble, and um, acetates are soluble, C2H3O2 minus, this is acetate. It says acetates are soluble and there are no exceptions. So calcium acetate is soluble. So if it's soluble, then we write AQ after, because it's an aqueous solution. All right, so now I've finished the uh, compounds on the product side, and now I need to balance the equation. So to balance the equation, we write down the compounds that we have on each side. And so now we're, we're, we have a lot of elements on this one. So I'm gonna show you a trick. Instead of separating O and H, I know that OH sticks together because it's hydroxide. So, um, oxygen, hydrogen, and then I have this uh, polyatomic ion C2H3O2. And since this unit is the same on this side as it is on this side, and instead of keeping track of carbon and hydrogen and oxygen separately, I should just keep track of acetate units. So on this side I have Ca and O and H from water and acetate C2H3O2. So how many calciums on this side? One. How many oxygens that are not acetate? Two. How many hydrogens? One, two, plus this one, three. And then how many acetates? One. Over here, I have one calcium, one oxygen that's not in acetate, two hydrogens that are not in acetate, and two acetates. All right, so where should we start on this one? I have two oxygens on this side and only one oxygen on this side. So if we put a two here in front, then that's gonna change the number of hydrogens I have. Two times two gives me four hydrogens and two times one gives me two oxygens. All right, so now calcium is balanced, oxygen is balanced, but now I have three hydrogens on this side and I have four hydrogens on this side. So I need another hydrogen, so let's put a two in front of here. That gives me two times, so I have two times one, two hydrogens here, plus these two hydrogens, that's four. Remember, I'm keeping track of acetate separately so that I don't have to break all these apart. So now I have four hydrogens and four hydrogens, and this two also multiplies by the subscript of acetate, which is one. So if I have two H's, I also have two acetates. So now this is balanced. I have one calcium and one calcium, 
two oxygens here, two oxygens here, two plus two, four hydrogens on the left side, four hydrogens on the right side, two acetates on the left side, and two acetates on the right side. Okay, so we balanced this one. Now, let's write the complete ionic and net ionic equation. So calcium hydroxide, I have one calcium and two hydroxides. This is going to break apart and make two H's, H pluses, and two acetates, H3O2 minus. Remember, pure liquids don't break apart, so H2O does not break apart. But this is dissolved, calcium 2 plus plus 2 acetates. Okay, so this is my complete ionic equation, where everything that is aqueous has been broken apart, and now I'll locate the spectators. Calcium is a spectator and acetate is a spectator. Cancel, cancel. And then I rewrite what is left over. We put the positive in front. So 2H plus plus 2OH minus makes 2H2 O liquid. But remember, I have to have these numbers be as simple as possible. So a 2 to 2 to 2 ratio is the same as a 1 to 1 to 1 ratio. So H plus plus OH minus makes H2O liquid. So in an acid base reaction, this is always the net ionic equation. H plus plus OH minus makes H2O.